Hi, welcome to uh, this presentation of uh, the Catholic Worldview's uh, big questions on, you know, what is purpose in life or what is the purpose of life um, in this Finding Meaning topic. So um, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through uh, this presentation. Um, I'm going to have a look at this idea of the Catholic worldview and we're going to have a look at this question of what is the purpose of life and what does that mean. So um, I'm just going to plow right into this. Okay, so there is a, an idea uh, in the Catholic worldview that we have a reason to exist. We have a purpose, okay? Uh, we exist in a world full of purposes. And there are purposes that can be known by the human mind, all right? So the idea of purpose is uh, an innate part of the Catholic worldview of the whole picture of the Catholic purpose. Um, if we look at um, John 1, 14, when the word became fresh, uh, uh, the idea of the logos, this is a Greek word, which means sort of word is how we translate it in English, but it, it means more than that. It means like meaning or purpose of life. Indeed, the, the philosophers in the time of Christ were arguing a lot about, you know, what is the meaning of life? What is the purpose? And this word logos was sort of the, the key. And so Jesus is described by John as the logos and so there's this idea when jesus becomes fully human that part of human life then is to discover purpose and to have purpose and to have purpose in the beginning so this sort of idea then is that we can have a purpose and that purpose is reflected in the life of god and so we do have a reason to exist or we do know that there is purpose in the catholic worldview and this is why that is the case so if we look for and something I'm going to try and do throughout the course of this is to present to you um, evidence for uh, these particular ideas. Now, Aristotle, who's pre-Christian, you'll note, um, has a sort of a, a, an understanding of purpose, which sort of um, was very much around in the ancient world and, and sort of shapes um, the Catholic response. And so he says this, he says, every art, science, in every science reduced to a teachable form and in every like manner, every action and moral choice aims, it is thought, at some good for which reason a common and by no means bad description of the chief good is that by which all things aim at. This uh, quote taken from the ethics, which is talking about the idea of human happiness, underpins Aristotle's idea that there is purpose to every human action and purpose to every uh, being in the universe. To have being is to have purpose. And this is kind of a key understanding. So St. Thomas Aquinas takes this idea and builds on it. So Aristotle viewed that the chief purpose of the human life was to be happy. And so Aristotle was the foundation was one of the foundations for Thomas Aquinas. And he took that and combined that with the Gospels. And this sort of forms a foundation of the Catholic worldview. He says, man's ultimate happiness consists in contemplation of the truth. For this operation is specific to man and is shared with no other animals and is not directed to any other end since the contemplation of truth is sought for its own sake. And in addition, in this operation, man is united to the higher being, substances, since this is the only human operation that is carried out both by God and by separate substances, angels. So human beings are made to contemplate the truth. This is one of our sources of happiness for, for Thomas Aquinas. And he would take it, therefore, to, to, to extend beyond Aristotle's idea that um, you know happiness is the purpose of life. He would say happiness is found in the contemplation of the truth, which is God himself. So... Something that's really interesting and um, really fascinating about the Catholic worldview is that we have this assumption that we can know things through reason. And so this comes through particularly strongly in the First Vatican Council's teaching. Now, if you were in my class last year, you'll remember that when I talk about um, the Enlightenment, I say that you know Vatican I is, is directly responding to these ideas of the Enlightenment, the idea that people are reasonable and what is reasonable and, and that we can know things through reason. The church argues and teaches 
that God, the beginning and end of things, may be known by the light of human reason and by means of created things. For invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. So God is knowable through reason. This is a huge point. And so this sort of builds on this idea of the purpose of human life, of happiness, is to employ our reason, employ our minds to know and to contemplate who God is. And so this shapes this idea of you know, what is the Catholic worldview. So it's not just to know God, but knowing in the Catholic sense is taken into the deeper understanding to the idea of loving. And so the human person is called to love God. And this is kind of the ultimate act of knowing is to love God. And then this is, of course, the answer to what is the purpose of life. So how do we understand and know these purposes? Well, according to philosophy, the human person has an organizing principle, which is known as the soul. And this is the unchanging aspect of the person, which is immaterial. So is kind of a bit misunderstood, especially sort of you might know stories uh, from like the 17, 1800s where like scientists were like, oh, let's try and figure out the weight of a soul. Now, the idea that the soul exists as an immaterial thing means by definition it doesn't have a weight. Um, but there were those who sort of try to figure out if it was a physical thing. So the philosophers argued that the um, soul exists and within it there is the intellect, which is a the foundation of knowledge of purposes and the will, the ability to choose. This is our ability to make decisions. Now, this is important because uh, it means that, that our ability to choose rests outside of our physical nature, which means, therefore, that it can operate freely, which can means it can operate sort of, you know, it can restrain our nature at times or, or go with it at times. Uh, the ancients sort of uh, didn't view that our ability to choose was something that was found within our physical form. Now, the reason for this is that the physical form is limited and changes all the time, right? But can we make constant decisions? And the argument is, yes, we can sort of make decisions in the face of change. And so in order for this to be the case, the thing which makes the decisions cannot be the same substance or say made up of the same stuff that changes all the time. The intellect is the place of knowing purposes uh, in nature and, and is and is our, is our source for this. So deep within us, the way we know the world is we kind of we identify purposes. And Aristotle would say that we do this through investigating things of this world. He's kind of like a scientist. It's where we break things apart or sort of examine the way things work. And we sort of come to understand what the purpose of a thing is. Whether those purposes be found in nature, whether it's, we talk about animals and their purposes, or whether it be objects or things that we make and their purposes. OK, we have an intellect which can know the final cause of things. So what does this mean? It means that the uh, we can understand sort of what what things are really for or what things are really about. And, and we have a sense of this. Uh, you'll know the phrase, well, at the end of the day. And this kind of is this indication of this kind of idea of final purpose of a thing. Um, the human person makes use of reason in order to make sense of the world. This is John Paul II's uh, teaching in Fides and Ratio. Faith and reason, he says, can can um, can help human beings find the purpose in life. And so through the intellect, we can know that God exists. And through faith, we can assent, which means we can sort of trust that that is truth. And so the combination of those two things leads us to our knowledge of our purpose and living that purpose out. And so this is kind of the foundation for our teaching of the fact that there is a purpose to life. We're called to love God and to know God. And this foundation provides the basis for this. Well, notice that here in this slide um, that I have used three different colors. And the point of this is to kind of highlight um, different aspects. So this here is the big question. What is the purpose of life? This is what we call an existential question. So within it, we can see that there are already assumptions. But for, for the purpose of this, we're going to say, OK, and then what, what is the Catholic answer? And it can be summed up quite simply um, with this sort of 
is uh, the purpose of life is to be with God forever. This is what human beings are made for. This is kind of the answer. So we look then, what are the assumptions which sit under this? And this is kind of the basis for our idea of analysis. So every sort of answer that we're going to look at, we're going to look at, well, what are we assuming? Well, this is something we've been talking about, that life is a purpose that we can know. The second thing is that we are made for relationship. And then finally, we desire life with God. These would I identify as sort of three assumptions which are sitting under there. There are more assumptions than this, but these are sort of three that I'll highlight just to sort of get us going. And it sits underneath this idea that God, the purpose of life is to be with God forever. Now, we are made for relationship. This is one of the first assumptions. And during this time of lockdown, I think we kind of, seeing this kind of highlighted in quite a strong way. Um, the Trinity is a perfect community. And so we understand that God is relational. So according to Catholic understanding, God in his very nature is a community. He's a relationship. And so what we see then is that if we are made in the image and likeness of God, we reflect the life of the triune God which is one God in three persons. And so this relationship that is God, and God is love, is reflected in selves. Now, we are both a community internally, a relationship between ourselves. We often find ourselves posing questions to ourselves or sort of you know, in conversation with ourselves. But we are also in communication with others. Uh, we think of John Donne, uh, the famous poet from the 1500s. He said, no man is an island. Now, what does he mean by this? He means that, you know, we are always within community and society. And John Paul II in his book, um, The Acting Person, really explained this further. He says that we are acting persons. He says we, we, we precisely discover our meanings in relationship to the other. It's without the other, we, we struggle to find out who we are. We can't sort of bind within ourselves, but it's in the relationship to the other that we find and discover this dynamic that we discover ourselves. And all of these things sort of sit underneath and sort of build on this idea that the human person is made for relationship. The incarnation. Jesus, <coughs> we teach, is fully human and fully God. So we can, full, we can find our purpose in life as expressed in the human life of Jesus. So Jesus is this perfect model for us of how to live as a human being. He is the fullness of what it is to be human. And so relations, humans in relationship with God, men can find a way to know the purpose of life through a relationship with him. So this means that truth or meaning is not just an idea, but a person we can know. And this reinforces this understanding. So as we get to know Jesus, we come to know ourselves and this sort of relationship is kind of the foundation for our meaning and so this idea then that we know within relationship is uh, expressed fully and so the incarnation is this other sort of mysterious relationship we can't fully explain like how could jesus be fully god and fully human it's hard to understand but there's a unique relationship there and it's the interplay between the two things which helps us to understand both god and ourselves in a deeper and a more profound way. And so this is one of the key assumptions at the heart of our faith. And finally, we have a desire for God. All human beings desire something bigger than which we can fulfill. We all have the experience of unsatisfied desire and desire for something more. And so it leaves us with this question, if nothing created can fulfill this void, is there an uncreated thing which will satisfy our desires finally. And, and this is where we find a, a sort of an assumption and a basis for the existence of God. And so we come to know then that God exists and we desire him. What I want you to do now in response to this, I want a paragraph. How have Catholics come to their conclusion about the meaning of life? I want you to then draw on or pick on a couple of the assumptions here and I want you to put this together in a paragraph and that is how you can respond to this lesson. I hope what I've presented here is helpful and thoughtful. If you have any questions, please let me know.